because you want it for all the months that you've asked for it and told me that I was wrong for skipping it. On Monday, we're starting Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to be pretty pissed off because you guys keep telling me it's the best RPG ever and I'm so wrong for skipping it. If this game isn't great, I'm going to call you out. Alrighty, so today is Friday, the 8th of December, 2023. I'm Darkside Phil. I welcome you here to the Level 1 Podcast. And today, of course, will be a hefty show. Because today is the Game Awards Decompression Show. Now, as you know, I've told you guys this every single year. The Game Awards are not official. The Game Awards do not represent anything official whatsoever. Just because a game won or lost or ranked but didn't win at the Game Awards doesn't mean a game is good or bad. They have absolutely no bearing on anything. In fact, the Game Awards are actually voted on majority, majority by journalists, and we all know that games journalists are actually not in line with what most gamers want. Therefore, we actually have absolutely nothing to talk about today. So that is it for the podcast, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Well, except that I say this every year and no one listens to me and everyone still judges the Game Awards as if it has some true bearing on the goodness of games and they actually will rank their games based on what the Game Awards said won or lost. So I end up having to talk about it every year regardless. I really wish that people would not give it as much weight or merit because quite frankly, I feel like a lot of great games get overlooked and a lot of bad games get overhyped. We're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss the elephant in the room. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you can believe it, the biggest surprise shocker ever just happened at the Game Awards 2023. Are you ready for this? This is what everyone wants me to talk about. This is the burning topic that must be addressed right now before we get to anything else. Game of the Year was not given to Starfield. And that is an absolute atrocity. We all know that Starfield was definitively, without a doubt, without any kind of criticism or commentary possible, it was the indisputable best game of 2023, hands down. How could anyone possibly say something differently? And the fact that it didn't win Game of the Year just proves that it was complete sham. This is just a bunch of people who are trying to push agendas. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? We all know there's an Xbox tax out there. No matter what, if a game is exclusive to Xbox and not on PlayStation, it'll never win at the Game Awards. And that's just a bunch of baloney. Of course, I'm being completely facetious with that. <laughs> That's complete bullshit, right? Uh, what's funny to me, all right, this year is that, and I said this earlier this year, and I'll reiterate, and I will, I'm basically going to address what people want me to address, but it's not intelligent people who want me to address this, sadly. Um, basically, this year was a year when there were so many games that when they came out, Everyone was just so sure that they were going to be game of the year this year. Are you ready to go through the list of games? You know, first we started off with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Oh my god, this game is so good. I can't believe that this game would not be game of the year. And then it was Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Wow, it blows away Breath of the Wild. It's so many innovations and so many new things. I can't believe this game wouldn't be game of the year. And then it was Final Fantasy 16. Oh my god, it's the best Final Fantasy ever. Amazing music, great visuals. It's a great story. I can't believe it. The best game of the year. And then Baldur's Gate 3 came out. Oh my god, it's the best RPG ever made. Fan service out the wazoo. They really put attention to detail. There's no way it can't be game of the year. And it, it just kept continuing all year, right? And the funny part was, every time that this happened, I called it out. And I was like, you guys realize, because go back, you'll hear me saying... You guys realize not every major RPG and or release this year can be game of the year, but that's how everyone is acting. There's all these different pocketed fan groups who are all acting like no matter what, their game is going to get game of the year. And at that point when all this was happening, because I specifically remember there was a particular podcast where I addressed it, I said, you have to understand something. There's absolutely no way all these games can win Game of the Year. In fact, I would bet a lot of these wouldn't even get nominated. Now, in that regard, I guess I was wrong. Because if you actually look at the games that got Game of the Year nominations, it's pretty much every game that had a major fan base, except for a couple, which we'll talk about in a second. 
Okay? So, um, when we got to that point, I basically made a statement. And I was like, listen, you guys got to understand something. At that point, Baldur's Gate 3 was only on PC. There actually hadn't even been an announcement of when it was coming to console yet. And everyone on PC loved it. But I said, you got to understand something. There's a couple factors here. Number one, if it's only a PC game, that's an isolated audience. If it's not mainstream available, there's going to be people who are not going to be able to play the game. That's going to be a hard sell for game of the year. You know, take a look at previous years of a game like Divinity 2, right? Which everyone absolutely praised and loved. But a lot of people never even talked about because it was PC only for the longest time until it finally got console ports, right? I mean, that's a, a short case of that from the past. Now, in addition to that, at that time, because we're talking around the summertime, there were still big releases on the horizon, like uh, Starfield and Spider-Man 2 and a few others that people were eyeballing. And particularly, it was actually Starfield that we were eyeballing at that time. And we were like, well, if this game absolutely lives up to all of the promises that are made about this game, okay, um absolutely this game could be game of the year shoo-in right it's a make or break game for bethesda they've had a bunch of bad disappointing outings right before this correct i mean take a look at they had the uh redfall which was absolutely terrible under arcane studios they had fallout 76 which was an atrocity at launch and to this day it has an online player base but nowhere near what they were originally wanting for the game because it flopped at launch Fallout 4 had a bunch of major criticisms, and the fact they just keep really re-releasing Skyrim and not putting out anything new, this was the big one. And with that media hype behind it and everything, you're like, wow. It I, I, the, the common feeling was that it was kind of a wait and see. At that point, I told you, I thought, I thought for me all year, I was thinking Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, or Starfield. At that point, that was my thoughts. Those are going to be the big three that will likely be contention for Game of the Year. But knowing how journalists lean towards Nintendo, because I never thought that Breath of the Wild would have won, and it did, okay? And knowing how journalists go with hype, and if Starfield was good, then he probably would have leaned right towards that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I thought for sure those would have gotten favor, okay? But here's what happened. Let's be honest, Starfield's not very good, right? Starfield is a huge disappointment. I mean, I talked about it in the credits of the playthrough. I, I gave you my review of it. It's just incredibly underwhelming. Um, but once, essentially, Starfield sucked and was not even nominated for Game of the Year, yeah, I think that the top two games that it was between was Tears of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate 3. And I said as much. But the funny part is, people out there who are morons like to take one moment in time and act like that moment in time is eternal, that nothing ever changes. If you take my quote from many months ago that said, Baldur's Gate 3 is not going to win Game of the Year because it's PC-centric, and right now with everything else going on, those other games, like I even said, Starfield is a shoe in for Game of the Year if it's as good as it, people are saying it's going to be. And what happened? Well, Baldur's Gate 3 released for console. People absolutely loved it on console, and it got more mainstream attention than it had before. Starfield came out and flopped. No one likes it. As a direct result of your request, as a direct result of the Game Awards, and as the direct result of the generosity of viewers because I received a donation on Monday on the daytime stream starting right then at 12.45 p.m. Pacific time for the first time ever right here live on DSP Gaming because you want it for all the months that you've asked for it and told me that I was wrong for skipping it. On Monday, we're starting Baldur's Gate 3. And let me tell you something. If this isn't the best RPG I've ever fucking played in my life, if it's overhyped, if it feels underwhelming, if it's a slow-paced piece of crap, I'm going to be pretty pissed off because you guys keep telling me it's the best RPG ever and I'm so wrong for skipping it. If this game isn't great, I'm going to call you out. So you better be ready. But don't worry, I'm going to be fair. I'm not going to unfairly judge this game. I'm not. I'm going to be fair and I'm going to be calm and I'm going to judge it for itself fairly as we play it. But my God, you guys have ridiculously overhyped this game. And every time that I've asked the question, how is this game the best 
RPG, no one can answer. Well, it's got a great story. So do other RPGs. Oh, well, it's, it's good combat. Other RPGs have great combat. Oh, the atmosphere, yeah. Oh, well, the devs listen to the fans. Other devs have listened to fans. Can you definitively explain to me what exactly it is in this game that makes it stand out? The bear sex scene. <laughs> That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. You tell me the game is good because it has a bear sex scene. What are you, five years old? So that's what I mean. Like when everyone says it's the best, but no one can actually explain why. That makes me wonder about it. Okay. So we're going to find out. Now, by the way, I want to remind you all of the reasons why I didn't play Baldur's Gate 3 this year. You ready? First of all, it was PC only. So I couldn't play it at launch because it was PC only. Okay. Oh, third out of the third, I don't have any money to invest. He's saying, if you just invest in PC gaming, you'd be getting so much more out of it. I ha don't have money to do it. I 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 don't have money to pay my fucking taxes. You think I'm going to buy a fucking gaming PC? You're out of your mind. All right? Jesus. By the time it came out on PlayStation... I was already in the midst of other fall playthroughs that were popular, and I didn't really have time to play a lengthy RPG at that time. Also, because of the way this game has been described, and because of the way that people are telling me that it is, all right, uh, basically, here's the deal, all right? I feel like it's not a game that fits the format of my streams. If people are saying that a minimum playthrough of this game is 60 to 80 hours long, if not longer, how on the fuck do you think that fits into my streams? I'm a variety streamer. I am a variety streamer. Now again, I'm not trying to set the game up for failure. I'm a realist, all right? I'm telling you, I already figured from everything you guys have told me about this game, I don't think it would work for my streams. But I'm listening to your feedback. You want it, it won game of the year, all right? And basically it's been donated now. So every factor has lined up. I have no excuse to not play it. I'm going to play it. All right? In fact, I actually think at this point, there's been so much demand. There's been so much stuff that people have asked for. I'll give it a shot. All right? I'm, gonna, I'm, you know, I'm a fair guy. When so many people yell at me about it, right? <laughs> I'll do it. So we're starting Monday. And I'm going to approach it with an open mind like any other game. Literally, I will not, I will not be a dick about it. I'm not going to be you know, a negative asshole to the game. I'm going to approach it like an open RPG. I'm going to, and I think people say character creation is pretty cool. We'll jump in. We'll see how the plots are. By the way, and here's the really cool part about it. I know nothing about this game. I've never played a Baldur's Gate game before. So I don't know the plot, okay, at all. I've gotten zero spoilers about it because I don't understand. I never played one. I don't know. How could you spoil me? You know what I'm saying? So this is 100% cold turkey for me to jump into this game. All right? So let's find out how it's going to go. Now... Yes, I will be very honest with you up front. If I play this game within two to three streams, everything is falling off. People aren't showing up. People are disengaging, not even talking about the game. They're just talking about other shit. They're saying it's boring in the chat. No one, like literally no one is talking to me. They're all, everyone's having their own conversations about bullshit. What are you talking about? Engagement's dead. Support is dead. No one cares about the game. No, I'm not going to fucking play this game for 100 hours. No. Absolutely not. The thing is, if it's good, if I'm hooked on it and I really like it and you guys are liking it and we're all engaged, we're having a good time and it ends up being a great stream, I am happy to play this. But I want that atmosphere. I don't want, oh, everyone wanted it, but it was a trick because it's a fucking game that everyone knows won't work for his streams. Then I'm not playing it. Fuck off. You know, it's that simple because I already feel like it won't work for my format. I've told you that already. I've predicted that. But maybe, you know what? I would like to be proven wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. I love, here's the thing, I love RPGs. Did you notice? <laughs> I grew up playing RPGs. It's one of my favorite genres of game. The problem is, RPGs are very hard to retain attention. They just are. They're hard to retain an audience, okay? And by the way, I already saw, are you ready for this? I already saw people in chat already setting the stage for failure. You ready? Oh, well, if he plays the game now and it doesn't do well, you can't blame the game because it's four months later. Bullshit. It's an RPG. I can play whenever the fuck I want. I didn't play every Elder Scrolls game the day it came out. Oblivion, how many years late did I play that? 
What the fuck are you talking about? No, if it's such a good RPG, it should be good whenever I play it. No excuses that because it's four months later, oh, now people won't watch it. Fuck you. Stop trying to already make excuses for why the game will not work on my streams because you're afraid it's not going to and then you're going to look like an asshole. So no, I'm not taking those excuses. Those excuses are invalid. If the game is good, it's good forever. Let's see if it's good starting on Monday. It's that simple. No more bullshit. <laughs> I've had enough of the bullshit. I really have. All right. So I am excited. I really am excited to start it. Start this on Monday. And you know what? I will say this. I'm always someone who is willing to admit when I'm actually wrong. If yesterday I had said there's no chance in hell Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win Game of the Year and then it won, I would say I was completely wrong. No, I said that ages ago before all the qualifying things happened to make it look like it was going to win. And I was asked recently, would it win? And I said, yeah, it's either Baldur's Gate or Zelda. Those are the two games that are going to win Game of the Year, one or the other, right? So, no, you don't get to say it. no gotcha moments on me. Oh, I see you said it wasn't going to win. Yeah, that was like six, seven months ago. Shut up. You're an idiot, okay? In this case... I would be willing to say, hey, if it works for my streams, if it's a great game, I will be happy. Do you understand? I will actually be happy to be proven wrong. I would be. I would love to have a great game in my streams. Now, I want you to understand something. We are opening a big can of worms with this, and here's why we're opening a big can of worms. In January, there's two big RPGs, Persona 3 Remake and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, both of which are ginormous, both of which are highly anticipated, both of which everyone wants to see. How the fuck do I keep playing Baldur's Gate 3 with those games? I can't. That's the answer. I can't. There's no way that I can juggle t 17 RPGs at once. You understand that, right? So, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. We're, again, this game is so lengthy. With my variety schedule, this is also kind of setting myself up for disaster. I don't see how I could be playing that many games at once, right? It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. If this game, if we play it and it's great, right? And now all of a sudden, it's like now we have to make a decision. Well, crap, what games am I skipping? What games am I playing? And I think this is going to come more into play because on the Christmas Marathon, December 23rd, which is coming up, by the way, it's about two weeks from tomorrow, right? Uh, that's when we're going to go through the game schedule for 2024. We're going to look week by week what games are coming out, and we're going to determine which ones are interesting that you want to see me play. And once we figure this out, you know, we're going to have to make tough decisions. This is going to be a tough one. I'm going to have to drink. I'm going to have to start drinking eggnog and whiskey to make these tough decisions about the schedule because I love these games. It's going to be sad to say I just can't play them all because, you know, I'm one man. You know, what are we going to do? So it's going to be a rough one, you know. We'll have to talk about this and figure this out together, all right? And I did nothing wrong. I did absolutely nothing wrong. I did everything right.